Let's talk about Nitro. I need a break, Brian. You talk about oh, Nitro. Get out of here. <laughs> Nitro, uh, July uh, 18 of the year 2000. Correct. Thank you very much. Is that really the date? Yes. Yeah. That's pretty good. Tuesday Nitro this week. Number it was? Two. Yeah. Yes. What happened? I wasn't paying attention. There was something there was on Monday. Like a baseball uh, game or something. I forget. But uh, yeah, n- number 252, Tuesday Nitro. Opens with various clips of Scott Steiner being crazy and attacking people. This was the funniest fucking video. It's all about Scott Steiner, and they have the most overdramatic music you've ever heard. It was like music you'd hear on America's Most Wanted or something. Okay. Or or People's Court. It's just this, this hilarious, wacky music. And Scott Hudson's recapping everything. And he says, If Scott Steiner worked anywhere else, he'd be behind bars. Or worse. <laughs> in mm. any other walk of life were his exact words. I'm like, worse than behind bars? No. So he'd be dead? Sure. <laughs> what? He's not that bad. Oh, I don't know. Oh, there's, there, 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 if Scott Steiner, if he acts, if, if Scott Steiner acted in the world, as he does on Nitro all the time, eventually he'd get shot. He, he kind of, he kind of did. It's not all, <laughs> not 24 hours. <laughs> okay. But yes, he did like hit people with his truck and stuff. Yeah. That didn't happen. Construction guys and yeah. such. What I liked is, I, I, I guess to be the fair... The funny thing is, in real life, he is in real life, and he did do a bunch of crazy things that year. Yes. But he never went behind bars. No. Well, Which is why, as Scott Hudson said, in any other walk of life, he would already be behind bars. But I'm pointing out that he actually had a legitimate other walk of life, which is being Scott Recksteiner. <laughs> sure. And he, like, ran people over in his fucking car when yes. they were... <laughs> I suppose. They never went behind bars. They never did. Well, they looked at him and were like, let's just slap him on the wrist. Well, the police come and they see him and well, you better call the National Guard. I don't yeah. know what to do. So on Thunder... Good luck. <laughs> no, no, it's easy. <laughs> he was being interviewed by Mike Tanay and Tanay pissed him off and so Steiner nearly killed him until Medeja pulled him off. And then they played the People's Court music to tell us how serious this was. <laughs> it's so violent they can't show it on TV. Mm-hmm. They did say that, yes. Uh, the first thing we see on Nitro is Scott Steiner attacking a car with a lead pipe. You know what's funny, by the way, is... Remember when Vampiro got thrown off that thing when he was on fire? Whatever the stupid thing sting, they did to the sting. pay-per-view, yeah, Sting? Yeah. I don't even know what it was, because you said it was the pay-per-view before. Something horrible happened in the pay-per-view, and last week they said, we can't even show you, right? but buy the replay. Yes. Okay. So we're not allowed to see what Steiner did to Tanae. <laughs> but there is no replay. No, that's true. So you know what that means? It must have just been so bad. Well, what happened to the pay per view was not necessarily ultra violent. It was just legal means. Sure. They, they, they were afraid Hulk Hogan would sue them. Yes. Yeah. But Which this must have did, just looked but... so horrible that they were like, we cannot air this on Nitro. I see your point. And yeah. think about that. Yeah. They showed stills of him choking Tanay. Yeah. Tanay is an over the top sort of fella. That's true. So Scott attacks his car with a pipe. Rick's out there trying to calm him down. Eventually, they leave. And Stevie Ray is now part of the commentary team. As of this moment right here. Because uh, Scott Hudson was had the flu. Scott Hudson had the flu. So Stevie Ray is part of the commentary team. Nitro Girls dance, which turns into the cat's entrance. The Nitro Girls were back on Nitro. Yes. Weird. <laughs> I, don't know what I recognize none of them. You realize they lost $62 million this year, and they destroyed a car yeah, a on nice Nitro. One. For literally no reason. I forgot it happened until I recapped it right there. Yeah. And they gave away Goldberg and Steiner for free. They did. <laughs> they did. So the cat announces there will be a tournament for a new U.S. champion tonight. A one-night tournament. These are the first round matches. Positively Canyon versus Mike Awesome. Correction, Vinny. Might Awesome. <laughs> Which actually is a pretty fucking great that name. That is a good name. <laughs> Might Awesome. <laughs> yes. It's even better. That's what he said. When you see, if you ever have to do the last name first, it would be Awesome, comma, Might. Yes. Mm. Lance Storm and Buff Bagwell. Vampiro versus the Great Muda. And Shane Douglas versus Billy Kidman. So then the cat, who's feeding with Scott Steiner, who's a lunatic, the cat begins to bury all the fat fans. This infuriates Scott Steiner. I don't know why. Because he's Scott Steiner. He destroys a monitor. He storms the ring. The cat thought it would be a good idea to come to this ring with exactly one security guard. And that security guard says, fuck this. And he vacates town. So Steiner just mauls the cat. Just <laughs> just grabs him. He wants a title shot tonight. They're in Detroit. He's in his hometown. 
Booker runs out, make the save. Rick Steiner's out there. Stevie Ray is out there. Eventually, there's more security guards. They all get separated. And the cat, who I'll remind you, 10 seconds ago was mauled by Scott Steiner. He again, for the second week in a row, calls Steiner a stupid bitch. Says, the only thing I'll give you is my ass so you can kiss it. He books Steiner against Goldberg for tonight. Says, kiss my ass and runs away. <laughs> this is a weird show. <laughs> It is a weird show. When he first came out, he said he had some rules for the audience. He said he didn't want the people talking too loud during the show, and he wanted all of the fat-ass people to stay in their seats. Where was he at stomping grounds? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Calling his mom, I assume. Buff is here with a Judy Backwell who's in a neck brace and staring right into the camera. Brian, if your mother is injured <laughs> and she has a neck brace... And My mother never would have gone to the show to get injured. Okay. What's this guy bringing his mother to the show for? Right. Well, in a neck brace. It only gets worse from here, guys. She should become the less... Let's save this for when it's really worth talking about. Okay. okay. <laughs> There's it's more. not ever worth talking about, but I'll wait. <laughs> there is more to come. They're at the announce desk. Jarrett attacks Stevie Ray, lays him out with oh, a guitar. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Stevie Ray started a new commentary. Jarrett is in with a guitar. Jarrett is angry. He's the chosen one. He has all the stroke around here. Maybe it's because I hadn't been introduced to Carlito yet, but looking back, Jeff Jarrett in WCW is the most one-dimensional, nothing-happening character I've ever seen. Okay. Like, I don't even... Like, at the time, I guess I was just so flabbergasted that Jeff Jarrett was a world champion. I didn't actually look and think about it, but mm -hmm. fuck, this guy has got... There's nothing about this guy. He's an angry guy mm -hmm. who hits people with guitars, mm -hmm. and he says he's the chosen one, and he has all the stroke around here. And he calls people slap nuts. He's got nothing else. <laughs> the other thing that makes it clear is that then we watched him do the exact same thing in TNA for a decade. Oh. It's true. <laughs> I feel like he had more personality when he was in Impact. Maybe I'm wrong. But here, he is just a... Boring robot. An angry one. I did laugh after he hit Stevie Ray with the guitar. It took him like three and a half minutes to actually fall. <laughs> it was the s slowest. I've seen glaciers move faster. Well, I don't think he was hurt because he was just totally fine like five minutes later. That is true. For the record, let it be known that at its worst here, WCW is still able to throw brackets on the screen for 10 seconds. It's not that hard. No. No. Positively Canyon versus Mike Awesome. Well, they were allowed to call it a tournament, too. That's, uh, yes. It that's, was not a series of matches for a, a championship opportunity. That's a strong point. Buff Bagwell and his crippled mom, Judy, are out there. Handicapped. Buff slaps hands with Awesome. So, first annoying thing. This happened in the opening segment and this segment throughout the show. The crowd sweetening was out of control. There's just random, generic, constant applause for two hours. It's drowning out the bumps they're taking. Funny you should mention that, Vinny. I was told, going back to Thursday's show, that Io Shirai was cheered wildly at full sail. Mm -hmm. And so they piped in booing. I see. Which oh. would explain why as she was leaving, you could hear everyone cheering. I guess they were just cheering the whole time. Got it. So this show wasn't actually live? Did they film it on Monday? And Maybe. I don't know. They can, they can pipe in booze over the loudspeakers. That's true. Or just on the TV truck. They have a big, giant production truck. Yeah. I, adding, adding crowd noise is not the most difficult thing in the world. Right. So, let's see. You had a table. It's not a DQ. A nut shot on the apron. Not a DQ. Diamond cutter through the table. Not a DQ. So, Canyon nut shots buff. Mama Bagwell is angry. She attacks Canyon in her neck brace. Mm -hmm. It's just like Mama Stunt. Canyon grabs the... I don't know how old she is. The mother in her neck brace. Early 50s? She grabs this woman in a neck brace, gives her what's supposed to be a canyon cutter on the floor. Sure. <laughs> That's funny. He gave her a snap mare. Yeah. <laughs> and like one of the announcers called it a canyon cutter. And I believe Mark Madden called it a beal. There's a beal thrown out there. <laughs> like it was way closer to a canyon cutter than a beal. Yes. That was not a beal. No. So think about this. You're buff. Your Thank mom you. came into this with a bad I appreciate neck. that. 
You can walk into this with a bad neck, and now this man has dropped her with a neck injury move. She may be dead now. Paralyzed at the very least. A paralysis, by the way, that you yourself are familiar with having your own neck broken on this show not that long ago. Right. You're so angry. You throw this fucker into the ring, and you start pumping your fist for your move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to hit a move. It's a dangerous move. Buff it's Bagwell a blockbuster. is the shittiest baby face I ever saw in my life. <laughs> <laughs> he hits a blockbuster. He leaves. I'm thinking, okay, they've done the table spot. They've done the bit with the old woman. They've done the interference. It's over. No, that's not the finish. That is not the finish. This map ke- match keeps going. On top of it, Awesome hits a ring power bomb, and Canyon loses anyway. Mm-hmm. So why was that not the finish? <laughs> Dude, I put over Johnny Ace doing the match layouts last week. I have already turned on this fucking Yes, it's so much overdone. So this, I've ranted about this a million times, I won't waste your time. It's a tournament. Don't do short, shitty matches. Right. Or I don't care. But the thing is, they don't have a middle ground. They actually, believe it or not, they did have a middle ground for the finals. But every other match in this tournament, it was either a short bullshit match, or it was a short WrestleMania match where these fucking guys kicked out 85 finishers. Yes. Is this that hard? Apparently. Just do a bunch of decent matches and then have somebody win at the end. Why is it so fucking hard? The times on the matches, this one was like four minutes. Next one was two minutes. Four minutes with all these fuckers interfering, Mm -hmm. a ref bump, a run in, a fucking awesome whatever, a canyon kicking out, and then awesome pins him anyway. That's fucking furious by the end of this. And a table spot and a woman getting laid out. And I still don't know what the point of Bagwell and Judy interfering was. Because right. it led to nothing. It led to nothing. Anyway. And then at the end, your winner got very large panties thrown at him. Big fat women's bloomers, we were told. That was the exact words. Big fat women's bloomers have been thrown into the ring, says Madden. Mm-hmm. Pamela interviews Lance. She is the dirt worst. <laughs> Like, I'm just begging for the WWE robots after Pamela Paul shock. The first thing she fucking says is, so you're pretty cute. Mm. And he ignores her. And she says, hello, I said you're pretty cute. I'm like, hey, fuck you. So Lance cuts a promo. It's serious business, not the dating game. Doesn't sing, dance, doesn't smile, doesn't joke. It's a tournament tonight. He's going to wrestle. All this sports entertainment crap goes out the window. I'm going to win the belt, rename it the Canadian Heavyweight Title. He walks off. Pamela looks right at the camera. And in reference to one of the WCW superstars, she says, What was that all about? Or who does he think he is? Or know. something. I'm like, Get off my fucking TV screen. Jesus. There's a million good looking women. A million. How many people in this world? A lot? Okay, there's probably a billion good-looking women here in this I, I, world. I, 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 admit, I'm not I don't need this, this one professor. here ruining this fucking show and acting like everyone else is a geek. Buff is there with his mother, Judy, and his brother, John. John, he says, take care of mom. I'm going to go handle business. Meanwhile, Canyon and Smooth have a discussion. Lance Storm versus Buff Bagwell. Lance has a promo about his new attitude and how the fans turn their backs on him. In week three or four. Ah, is he, has he even been here a month? <laughs> I think this is week four. No one's turned their back on anybody. You just got here. You know what this was? This was Becky Lynch after SummerSlam. Like, what are you talking about? I, Nobody I, turned on you. I guess. Nobody disrespected your anthem. Yeah. They just needed something for him to blame the fans. So he for. asked for the he asked for the Canadian anthem to be played. Buff attacks him during the anthem like a dick. And the fans chant USA. Yeah. This was far more disrespectful than the fans chanting this is boring during Alexa Bliss's match. I just want that known. So somebody here called Lance Stiff. And Mr. Stiff took a huge backdrop. I want to note that. They're talking about everything going on with Buff's mother. And Tony says, Buff Bag was going through an emotional roller coaster. He may be out here smiling, but you know what's messing with this head. Dude. I'm watching him. I watched him like four segments now. He's fine. Mm-hmm. He doesn't care about his mom. Nope. He's out here. He gets to flex and dance and do this, and do his move. He's happy. So again, Buff hits a DDT, calls for his move. 
Now this video of the Bagwells on the screen, it distracts a buff, a lance hits the half crab, Buff immediately submits so that he can now escape to the back and rescue his mom. Now, we couldn't see what was on the big screen, but I know that somebody screwed something up. It was bad. They had a, a long shot of the car and Judy, and it was supposed to be the attack, but the attack never got aired, and they had to air it after commercial. It was all kinds of messed up. Cat is in his office flirting with a nitro, nitro girl. When the young dragon's music hits... I love this. I don't care. This I, was this was the Pink Panther and yes, Kato. it's exactly what they they stole from the best. He can hear the music; no one else can. But he knows Trolls about to go down, so he dismisses her. And then, of course, the young dragons come out of hiding and attack him. As they're all brawling, Stevie Ray saves, but Cat jumps in, and says, "Wait, wait, wait! They're my friends. We're just practicing." I did laugh. <laughs> Yeah. I laughed about that, and then I laughed after Stevie demanded Jared, and he got Jared. They they go back, and Shat says, "Okay, guys, let's let's try it again. Let's finish." <laughs> and they all go, Hi-ya! And They all start doing their little. <laughs> that was great. It was awesome. I I turned on on Shat. <laughs> the cat young Here. dragons feud is great. It is it is entertaining. It's not even a feud. They're buddies. Yeah. Fair program. The cat young dragons program. Yeah, they're they're training partners. So we see the parking lot video. The Bagwells, Judy and John, are getting into a ring when Smooth runs up and says, John, who we just met two minutes ago, mm-hmm. something's going down in the ring. Buff needs you. And so Buff, or John, runs to help Buff, leaving his mother alone in the parking lot. A half a second later, Canyon's on screen. <laughs> he runs up. He drags Judy out of the car. Tears off her neck brace, grabs her by the head, and then conveniently moves off camera to supposedly give her a canyon cutter for the second time on the show. We then cut. Judy Bagwell's body is on the floor. <laughs> all right, listen. I don't. I don't mean this is tasteless. I know, but she's dead, <laughs> unmoving. She's not. She's, she's not literally breathing. unmoving. She's on her face. Right. Okay. Her. She's on her face, her hands are down by her sides. She has passed on. She's shuffled off this mortal coil. She is no more. Maybe she's just sleeping. Buff Bagwell and his brother John are so upset. Why are you so upset about John? Because we just met him. He's a major part of the show. <laughs> okay. But you say his name like he should have <laughs> was, a different name. Yeah, it was disdain. I don't know. Like Jack. I have this disdain for this whole show. It should be Buff and Jacked. <laughs> Yeah. Jacked Bagwell. Jacked Bagwell. So was that hard? That took you no seconds and no thought. Thank you. To think of Buff's brother Jacked. Yes. The point is, they are so distraught about the, dis- the, the, the demise of their mother. They're on their knees, kneeling over her rotting corpse, saying, I don't know what happened. It's your fault. You were watching her. Go get help. Okay, fine. The worst baby face I've ever seen in my life was Buff Bagwell on the show. <laughs> you need to watch Raw. Fair. <laughs> But listen, he was so unlikable and awful here. It's Buff Bagwell. <laughs> That's at his wor- fucking gimmick. At his worst. <laughs> Even when he was a babyface, his gimmick was he was an unlikable prick. Yes. <laughs> Which is great. When he was a funny heel, was awesome. When he's supposed to be a hero. My God. <sighs> Did him and Miz ever team? Oh. Hmm. Hope not. <laughs> That'd be all kinds of awful. Medasia tries to have a talk with Steiner. Steiner is sitting by the door. There's one door. They can open the door, this arena. This is where Goldberg's going to come in. Mm-hmm. Steiner is waiting with a pipe to murder him. Thank God those huge arenas only have one door. Yeah, uh, the door. Yeah. This 10,000 seat building. So he tells her to leave. It's not safe. And he's just going to kill Goldberg with a pipe. The Great Muda versus Vampiro in a U.S. tournament match. The vampire was now accompanied by the insane clown posse and the demon. They're pals now. Yeah, what the fuck's going on? I don't know. Every time I watch this show, there's something new, and I don't know why. <laughs> it's mind blowing. Yes. Vampiro and the and Dale Torborg are fucking buddies now. Yes. For, for, for and where's four Asia? Four minutes here. Has she recovered from being blown up by the Titan Tron or whatever <laughs> no, happened? I don't know. Something happened, and she blew up. Mm-hmm. I remember this two weeks ago. So- Muda's out there and. He wasn't super mobile, but like compared to the mid two thousands Muda, yeah. he was yes. Will Osprey. You mentioned this last week, and I kind of blew it off. But in two matches tonight, it was so clear he could move still in the year two thousand. 
And the amazing thing is that, well, first off, there was a grossly obese fan without a shirt on about oh, four rows up. I mean, what the who, fuck's going on? Maybe that's who Cat was talking about. Somebody put that a shirt on that guy this or guy, something. This guy looked like he had puppies. So, Mudo, Ugh. the baby face, beat him and 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 pinned him with a moonsault. <laughs> That's what happened. Like, listen, you know, in The Observer, they write about how Vampiro was upset about this in the back. Like, he's being an asshole. And I'm watching this match going, I'd fucking be mad, too. They've been pushing Vamp for, like, two months now. And then they send him out here to do a squash job for the Great Muda. Who, by the way, is just going to get beaten clean in the next tournament match. And that's probably the last we ever see of him. What in the fuck was this? My question is, why did he have to spray Madden in the face? With the mist. So man could go backstage and do a gimmick with Kiwi. That was later on. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that's the reason. Okay. Yeah, the ICP got misted. Madden in his sunglasses got misted. So at least he had an excuse to not be like writhing in pain. <laughs> so like, I think I'm okay. The glasses got most of it. But yes, Mooner took all the match. The demon got on the apron. Nothing came of it. <laughs> Muda hit a Frankensteiner, but uh, uh, Vamp kicked out. So Muda hit the backbreaker and the moonsault and won. Mm -hmm. Which, we need more finishes where a guy says, that didn't work, I'll try this, that worked. That's fine. There's a lot of moves in this match. There's a lot of moves. And then the vampire when ICP turned on the demon and laid him out, so the faction broke up in their very first appearance on Nitro. Yeah, they, they said that Dale distracted Vamp. I did not see this. I don't know what happened. Dude, there was a lot of explaining what happened, and when you rewound, it didn't happen. That was one of the stories of this show. Steiner's waiting to kill Goldberg. Instead, Ralphus and Norman Smiley come in. So Ralphus is fat anyway. Yes. And they gave him a great big belly pad too. So Steiner hits him in the belly with his pipe. And, and he yells, take it like a man. <laughs> Ralphus, and then he punches him in the face. <laughs> Ralphus doubles over in pain after this shot to his belly pad. And then Steiner actually did punch him in the head. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but he punched him in the head and I laughed. And Norman's begging for mercy, but Steiner killed him too. Oh my God, Shane Douglas and Billy Kidman. So Douglas is cutting this promo about banging Tori. And Shivani is like, think about this. Okay. Tori Wilson is now with Shane Douglas, and Shane's about to wrestle her ex boyfriend, Billy Kidman. What an amazing coincidence! Yeah, sure is an amazing coincidence. Tori looked spectacular here this evening. Love the young lady. Yes. Yes. Uh, franchise, she says, is more of a man than Kidman ever was. She was faking it every night. She couldn't wait. To get her ass franchise. That is actually what she said. Mm -hmm. So they're doing this match. Tori trips Kidman. Shane Douglas hits his oh, finisher. Fuck. They the forgot blood. spots. <laughs> they fall down. This is horrible. Tori trips Kidman. Douglas hits a Pittsburgh plunge. Kidman fucking kicks out of Not furious. the finish. Kidman tries a roll up. Douglas kicks out. Tori hits. Kidman with a chair. Douglas covers. Kidman fucking kicks out. I was so pissed. We're like two minutes in. Yes. I'm like, fuck you. And finally, Douglas... Here's the finish. No, I need to discuss this. Franchises his ass. Shane does, in fact, franchise his ass. The face-to-face -face stunner. He makes a cover. The ref counts one. The ref counts two. The ref drops his hand, but does not count three. Shane gets up and rolls over. The ref looks at Shane. The ref turns. The ref calls for the bell. A fucking atrocity, this match. This was fucking awful. Just the worst. It didn't go 24 minutes, though. No. Even they knew. <laughs> Even they knew. Let's do a horrible two-minute match instead of a horrible 20-minute match. I will... Yes, this was at least short. That is the only positive thing I can say about this. <laughs> so Goldberg, like, six weeks ago, turned heel. A horrible idea at the time. Everyone knew it. He's been a bastard, a miserable bastard this whole time since. He shows up today... The friendliest Bill you ever saw. He's shaking hands. He's smiling. He's talking to guys. There's some dude outside. It's some nice sunny day in, in, in Detroit. He's just hanging around with no shirt on. Goldberg has his shirt on, of all people. <laughs> but this guy has his shirt off. They're just chatting, shooting the breeze, having fun time. Steiner's still waiting for Goldberg. Tank Abbott tells us that NSYNC is down the road playing in front of an empty silver dome. Here's the real stars. It's three count. So three count is dancing. The young dragons get a ladder and attempt to steal their gold record. Mm -hmm. No, it's a match. 
I did not know this was a match until I didn't it was either. over and the bell rang. I could not for the life of me figure out what was going on. And then all of a sudden, Tony Schiavone did say, there's a match going on right now. And apparently, completely at random, in the middle of Nitro, they had a ladder match for the gold record, which apparently, apparently the Young Dragons had stole. What? So, so like, Three Count was trying to get their record back. Then who something. hung it up? Fuck if I know. I don't know what's going on. So, it was last week where they actually hung the gold record above the ring, correct? I don't remember. I don't remember anything on this show. <laughs> this happened. 5,000 things happened. This happened on... It had to have happened on Thunder if it was stolen. They did 10 matches between these two teams. I don't remember this anything. The shortest ladder match I've ever seen in my life. And yet, there were still a number of times I was certain somebody was about to die. Yes. Well, Evan got knocked off the ladder, fell all the way to the outside, grabbed his ankle, and appeared to be badly injured. Yes. yes. I uh, think he did injure his ankle because they do like a storyline on... Uh, either Thunder or next week's Nitro with Conan having him get this little tiny step ladder because he's hurt. Hmm. But they wrestle on the pay-per-view. Of course they Jeez. do. So apparently he can't be that hurt. So the ladder's up in the corner, and I think, I think Shannon tried to run and, like, jump and land sitting on it. Yes. Didn't work that way. He goes falling backwards onto his head. I've been screaming throughout this. For, it's three minutes of hell, and then the Young Dragons get the gold record and win. And the bell rings. I thought, well, that's a match? I had no idea it was an actual match until it was over. And might I say, Tank Abbott, the best dancer in this crew. He is. He is by far. It's not even close. It is, it, it's a great actor, for being honest. Tank, Tank Abbott and Three mm-hmm. Count. So Goldberg walks in the door. Scott, the door. Scott Steiner, as promised, tries to kill him. Now think about this for a second. Their biggest star, Bill Goldberg, was just on the shelf for months because he put his arm through a car window and nearly cut the damn thing off. Right. He's been back about a month. And they have him out here fighting with Scott Steiner, who's swinging a real lead pipe, breaking real windows. They're punching doors. I'm just waiting for somebody's arm to fall off in this. uh, This is madness. Geeks run out to break it up. Complete insanity. Rick, again, tries to calm Scott down. Good luck. Mike Awesome versus Great Muda. This is another one. It was in this match where Madden got misted. We all got yes. confused. Yeah, they yeah. went about three minutes, mm-hmm. and at least they did a real match with a real finish. But, like, the real match was Awesome pinned him clean with the running power bomb. Here's my entire in notes. In three minutes. Here's all my notes in the match itself. They do some stuff, and Awesome wins with running power bomb. Why <laughs> did Muda squash Vampiro if all he was going to do was lose to Mike Awesome and maybe never be seen again for all I know? Because the people, I don't even remember his career. The people making the show are dumb. Let's find out if he stuck around. I think he actually did. We'll never know. Well, no, we're going to know because I'm looking it up right now, Vinny. Okay. But you can you can Carry talk on. about something else if you want to while I'm, while I'm Googling. Buff beats up smooth until Kenyon saves. Madden asks Kiwi to fix his shirt. Now, somebody remind me. There are Saturday Night Live fans in this room. Mm-hmm. When did Mango debut on Saturday Night Live? Was it around this time? The late 90s? Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize at the time, Kiwi is a blatant ripoff of Mango. Sure. Because everyone, regardless of gender or sexual identity, they all are immediately smitten with him. Yes. Madden is obviously taken with young Kiwi, who blows him off. Paisley is back for the second week in a row. Or week in a row. She wants Kiwi to fix her skirt, but the artist drags her away. So he actually sticks around till September of 2000, and fucking believe it or not... He teams with Vampiro, doesn't he? He wins the tag titles with Vampiro and New Blood Rising from Chronic. Oh, that's in just a few weeks. What? That's that's two weeks away. Keep that in mind, Brian. Keep that in mind. Holy fucking Christ. Actually, I saw that match. It was in Vancouver. I think... Yes, it was in Vancouver. As I recall, that was in Vancouver. It's a very, very famous show. For yeah. bad reasons. Yes. And as I recall, even though it's a very short drive for us, and we did not at the time, you know, we might get a show every six months, and we were right. huge fans, we didn't bother going. I went. I don't think we. I don't, I don't think Brian and I did. No. Come I'd on. have to look. So it's Shane Douglas versus Lance Storm. Before the match, I'm just going to read verbatim what Tony Schiavone actually said during the intros. Recently, the latest edition of WCW... Okay, I was told we were going to show a magazine. Now we're not. That was Scott Steiner in Iron Man Magazine, I do believe. And I was told it was going to be something else. Well, that's the thing about Monday Night Show. You just never know, on many levels, what's going to happen. 
Now they ended up showing the magazine. <laughs> later they did. Well, they, they flashed Steiner here, and they showed this thing later. But did they not want to show it because Kimberly was on the cover as well? I don't know. They didn't mention that. She was on the cover. Didn't realize that. I got two things to say about this match. Let's get back on track Sorry. here. I realize Lance is my buddy and everything like that, sure. but it was abundantly clear in this match that he was the best worker on this entire show. Okay. And by the time the show was over and he was the heel U.S. champion, it was like, why isn't this guy the fucking champion? What does Jeff Jarrett do better than Lance Storm? Name one thing. He says slap nuts. Name one thing. <laughs> I'm sure with training. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I could get Lance to say slap nuts. Mm -hmm. And it probably would be funnier than when Jared says it. Probably. So the other thing that I... is a revelation to me in this match. I'd never thought about this before in my life. So Lance takes this backdrop over the top to the floor. And he practically does a handstand on the top rope and goes outside. Yep. And I thought, guy's a pretty good athlete. Sure. But if you recall... When he made his debut, I said he was a great athlete. So my, my, point, my point of all of this is, because he was in his gear, and because I see people doing athletic things in their gear all the time, I see. Lance doing something athletic in his gear, I was like, that's a pretty athletic guy, but my mind wasn't blown. But if you take the same fucking guy... And you put him in street clothes and tennis shoes, and he does the same high spots, you're like, holy shit, what an athlete. You understand what I'm saying? No. Because you're an idiot, Vinny. When, How many times when, have you ranted? When you see a person in a sporting event being an athlete in their sporting attire, okay. you're just seeing them in a sporting event. And your brain is like, they're doing a sport, of course they're a great athlete. Sure. If you saw... I'll give you a good example. If you were watching the Olympics and you saw some gymnast do a round off back handspring, double twisting full layout on the floor, you'd be like, fuck, that's very impressive. Then you'd see a bunch of other gymnasts do the same thing. If you're walking down the street in Seattle, if you're on your way to <laughs> it's the weirdest stomping thing grounds, and instead of seeing a naked man, right. you see some woman down the sidewalk do a run off back handstand, oh, I wish. double twisting layout. <laughs> I'd have been much happier. You'd be like, holy fuck, that's the most impressive thing I've ever seen anyone do ever in their life. Because they're in normal clothes. I see. You know what I'm saying? I do. I do. Thank you. I get it. I actually have a story. First of all, your reign is funny to me because I can't count how many times you've ranted about guys with no gear and how much you hate it. I do hate it. <laughs> but Lance doing all that crazy stuff in his fucking sneakers, to me, was much more impressive than him just doing it in his gear. So in, in, in high school, I once shared a Spanish class, Spanish class with her. Oh, dear Lord. Oh. And the, near the end of the period, uh, we're both in there cramming for extra credit. I was desperately trying to pass. She was desperately trying to get an A. And she finished before I did. And she goes up with Professor... And he goes over everything, checks this and that, does the math, and she announces, yes, you've done enough work, you get an A. And she was very happy, and she goes outside, and you know the classroom window's there. Yes. And she does, I believe you said it was called an aerial. It's sure. A, a cartwheel with no hands. Yep. She, but fl flying through the air, legs played, it's beautiful, gorgeous, graceful thing, and I thought, I know she's practiced for years to do that, but everyone in their life should get to be that happy once. <laughs> Okay. But my point would be... Well, she was in street clothes, too. It That's... blew your mind because she was in street clothes. If she was in a leotard, I probably would not have you been wouldn't as You wouldn't even have thought twice a about it. A gymnast did a gymnastic thing. Thank you. Thank you. So the other thing about this Finally. match, of course, is that not only is Lance a great athlete and a great wrestler, he also probably wrestled uh, Shane Douglas a dozen times or dozens of times in ECW. Now, does your theory work the other way if Lance is sitting in his gear on the couch eating chicken? I've never seen anyone eat chicken like that before. <laughs> yeah, I probably would say that. Okay. Well, we've established anyone, anytime you get wrestlers in their gear in a normal setting, it's always great. See, the thing with your, your original theory before you realized and had a revelation and realized I was right is that 99.99999% of this business, people in this business that work in their street clothes suck. Okay. So you ain't going to see anything that athletic. That's fair. You're denigrating the Sandman. Oh, yeah, you see Sandman do a... And quite frankly, if you saw Sandman do a flip dive over the top, you'd be blown away. 
I've seen him do flip by over the Because he's the Sandman. He don't look like <laughs> And he looks and dresses like that. Yes. Well, you can almost do anything when you're drunk. So anyway, Kidman's out there on the stage eating popcorn. This distracts Shane. They do 500 more near falls because they have to. And then Lance hooks the half crab. And even though they're both heels, and the, they're both heels, but at various points they're both playing babyface. But anyway, Lance hooks the half crab, grabs the ropes for leverage, and he wins. Mm-hmm. Billy Kidman then comes out to physically assault his ex-girlfriend. Thank God, Lance Storm, a gentleman, was there to save her. Yes, the evil heel. What the fuck? <laughs> so Stevie Ray, in his segment earlier with the cat, he wanted a match with Jeff Jarrett, and Cat said okay. And we were then told that Stevie Ray, our former broadcast partner, is getting ready for a match. He never said a word. He was on this show as a broadcast partner for maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> He called one promo, and then Jerry hit him with the guitar. Jeff Jarrett versus Stevie Ray. So in a minute, 100 people interfered, <laughs> and Jarrett won with the stroke. Yep. They literally have no middle ground. <laughs> they did for the final match, and that was it. Medeja threw herself <laughs> at Stevie Ray. This is a flying body attack. She was going to do an axe handle, but apparently I misjudged guess. how far away he was. And all of her weight, all 110 pounds, landed on the back of Stevie, and it barely moved him. She just hit him with her chest. <laughs> Flying through the air, hit him with that. Those are deadly weapons, too. Yes. So, in this woman match, we got four matches announced for New Blood Rising. Jeff Jarrett versus Booker T for the world title. <laughs> Sting versus The Demon. Shane Douglas versus Billy Kidman. And in a four-way for the tag team titles, Chronic... Versus the perfect event. Versus General Erection and Corporal Cajun. Versus Jindrak and O'Hare. Oh, really? There's no Vampiro in that well, list. Someone, someone must have... Uh, There's no Muda in that list. I can't wait to find out how they get to that. So, yes. Everything about this match. Stevie and this woman at match managed to hit the worst pedigree of all time. Mm-hmm. And then 10 million things happened and Jarrett won. Harlem Heat brawled with somehow Rick Steiner and Jarrett. I don't know. Steiner's throwing a tantrum backstage. Goldberg is stretching. Lance Storm versus Mike Awesome in the U.S. Tournament Finals. I hate to put this guy over again because I never hear the end of it, but he was in tremendous shape. This was his third match, yeah. and he worked his ass off with Shane Douglas. I And he had like 10 minutes. Yeah. It's not like this is a pay-per-view and you work the opener and then you work the main event. Like, he finished that match with Douglas, went backstage, they had a one-minute fucking match with Jared and Stevie Ray. Mm-hmm. Then he comes out here and has to go another whatever with, with Mike Awesome. And he worked his ass off in this match, too. I forgot when he stands for the anthem with his hands behind his back how insanely thick his neck was. He had a big neck. He had a huge neck. So, yes, they had a good match. It did drive me nuts. I know they Might have been he had a pinhead. It's also possible. I had, that's the other possibility. It's a very small head. Uh, we had a chair shot that was not a DQ. They're doing spots on a chair in the ring, not a DQ. Just make everything no DQ if you're going to do that. Was it just me or was Lance the heel but was the baby face in peril for like 90% of this match? Awesome, just hit him with move after move. Mike after Awesome move after does move. a lot of cool stuff, but he can be very random with it. He said, I, I will open this match with like a power bomb on our top rope splash, and then a work from there. Let me give it, let me have an opportunity to bury Lance here. Okay. They fucked up this tornado DDT. There was a horrible tornado DDT. It actually wasn't, I don't think, Lance's fault. So Lance is supposed to go for a tornado DDT, and I think, actually, I don't know, because the announcer said that they thought that Awesome grabbed the ropes, mm-hmm. but like, How the fuck would the announcers know anything? Right. They don't know what's going on. So they had to make something up because Lance goes for a tornado DDT and Mike Awesome just kind of falls to his knees and just stops. Yeah. So Lance is on the ground. He just lays there. So I think, I think. (laughs) What what, the fuck happened? I don't know what's supposed to happen, but it's not what actually happened. But I think Lance thought, well, I have just gone splat on this mat. I will lay here and Awesome will cover me. No! But the message never got relayed to Mike Awesome. Awesome just kind of got up and then was like, let's do some more moves. He did a lot of moves. I, I took it as Mike was grabbing the rope to stop the tornado. DDT. But he didn't. I rewound right. it. Right. He came nowhere near the rope. He went for the move and I mean, then just decided I'm not going to take this move. That may have been it too. Okay. He may have decided I don't want to take a DDT today. Back- of all the moves. I don't know. Backstage, the cat is in suspenders. He has a referee shirt. He knocks on Booker T's door. They have a conversation we can't hear, and then they go inside. It is time for Scott Steiner versus Goldberg. 
The cat comes out to be the referee. Booker T is on commentary. Here, the first thing Tony says is, this match has a pay-per-view feel to it. <laughs> I'm like, no shit! Because it should have been on fucking pay-per-view. Here, they finally got in the plug for Scott Steiner in Iron Man magazine. And they didn't talk about this, but they, they, they put the magazine picture on the screen with the following quote from Scott Steiner, which is one of the all-time great Scott Steiner quotes. I don't know how big they actually are. I don't measure them. It's too physiological. You can get psychotic always weighing yourself, measuring body parts. Okay. <laughs> That's a very Scott Steiner quote. I, 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 never, I never knew why he went so crazy in the year 2000. He was, was psychotic because he, he was kept measuring himself. their body parts. Yes. Wow. So my favorite style of wrestling is giant scary men hitting each other really hard yes. and throwing each other through the air. I thought that when I was watching this. This was a very short match, but while it lasted, it was glorious. Mm -hmm. Like, I hated this show up until the Lance Awesome match, which was good, and this main event, while it lasted, just warmed my heart. It's funny, because when the show was over, I wrote that it was a good show, and then as I reviewed it, I realized <laughs> this show sucked, until the last except 20 minutes. the last... 20 minutes, yeah, it was good. Yes. The best part of this match is they're doing all their stuff and they're being all hosses and everything like that. And for some reason, well, I guess I know why. Steiner puts him in the recliner and literally Steiner has the match won, but Shat has banned the recliner. Yes. So the referee, Shat, says, you got to break the hold. Steiner's like, fuck you. He gets up and he punches out Shat, who deserved it, by the way, because yep. this is bullshit. So Booker then hits the ring. And the spot is supposed to be that Goldberg is going to go for a spear. Booker will leapfrog him, and Goldberg will spear Steiner. Right. But Booker either doesn't jump high enough, or Goldberg just runs way too fast. And we have the most vicious-looking, <laughs> legit chop block in the history of wrestling. Fucking Booker goes ass over like, tea kettle, <laughs> ten feet in the air. You, you, you gotta imagine this, because Goldberg hits him in the legs. So, Booker spins in a center of gravity. So, as his legs go flying up very quickly, his head goes spinning down just as quickly. Yes, but he fucking flips over 10 feet in the air. He, he glances on the ground, he grabs his leg. I'm yes. like, oh, fuck, it's, it's over. Yeah. His leg is hurt, but not that hurt. But he shakes it off, and he still does the biggest jumping Harlem sidekick on Goldberg you ever seen in your life. And I'm just loving everything here. Then out comes fucking Kevin Nash. <laughs> yeah. The conquering hero is here to save us. Hometown guy. Power bombs Goldberg. He power bombs Steiner. And the show ends. And I'm like, fuck off. Yep. What an ending. What an ending. That was the end of the show. I mean, at least they're saving this match like the real match for pay-per-view. They actually eventually do this match on pay-per-view. And I, if I recall correctly, it's fucking awesome. I can't imagine it not being. By the way, yeah. did you mention Kevin Nash strolling down to the ring, drinking a beer? <laughs> Was he? Yes. Wow. All I know is that, look, let's be honest. These power bombs are really cool. Okay. Kevin Nash's power bombs and Goldberg and Steiner looked awesome, and the crowd loved it, so it was not my favorite thing, but I've seen dumber shit. Yep, it was uh, Fall Brawl 2000. Scott Steiner, Goldberg, that 13 minutes and 50 seconds. That sounds great. Yeah. I guess we'll talk about that when that time comes. Well, they may do five title changes between now and then. Are you ready, Vinny? Yes, Brian, I am prepared. The finishes on this show were... Pin after nut shot and a move through a table and interference from a man and his mother, but that's not the finish, but then a powerbomb is. Submission after distraction. Clean pin, I think. Pinned by a ref who doesn't count to three, but then decides it counts after one dude's finish wasn't the finish, and bonking into a manager wasn't the finish, and a chair shot wasn't the finish either. Win in a ladder match that I did not realize was actually a match until it was done. Clean pin after an announcer gets misted. Submission using the ropes for leverage. Pin after interference. Clean submission. And no finish in the main event. I almost hit the cue. Almost. You were close. God damn. 37 seconds it took to go over those fucking finishes. All right, we're out of time, everybody. Hey, did you know my new book, 100 Things WWE Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die, is out today, right now. If you go to Amazon, it'll be on your Kindle in two seconds. Oh. If you buy the hard copy, it'll ship in ten seconds. It'll be on your doorstep via drone in just a couple of days. 
So head up there and check it out. Today, I, w- I had four of the top five best-selling books in wrestling on Amazon.com. Four of the top five. Can you believe that? What was the other one? Uh, Jim Ross's book. Oh, well, yeah. And some random book that has nothing to do with wrestling that for some reason is ranked really high in bestsellers in wrestling. Hmm. It's bizarre. I refuse to acknowledge it. Okay. I don't count it. But anyway, <laughs> head up there and check it out, everybody. We'll be back on Thursday with more. I'll be back tomorrow with a million shows. And that's it. We'll talk to you again after a while. Good night. Bye.